Hey there. In our day and age, the world of software moves extremely fast. And as developers, we're tasked with making sure our applications stay up to date and move just as fast. And what that leads to is a need for balance between simplicity and complexity. And for the last 15 years, the RESTful model has served as that balance when it comes to APIs. Unlike earlier web service specs like SOAP and RPC, REST is simple. It's easy to learn, and on top of that, there's an entire suite of testing and debugging tools that make troubleshooting a breeze. So why throw away a good thing? Welcome to GraphQL in Motion. I'm Tyler Reckart. I'm a software developer and your instructor for this course. Throughout this course, we'll go over why GraphQL is the right choice when it comes to developing an API in the modern landscape. We'll go over a few of the core concepts that set GraphQL apart from REST, and from there, we'll dive into GraphQL's fundamentals. We'll cover schemas and resolvers, fetching data with queries, manipulating data and mutations, debugging and testing before finishing the course by integrating our API into a modern JavaScript application. But before we get started, let's go over a little history. In the beginning, websites were small and functionality was limited. Pages were static and connections were slow. However, over time, our ability to build increasingly complex websites and services has grown at an exponential rate. The smartphones that we carry in our pockets are millions of times more powerful than the computers that sent men to the moon and back. The entire world's bank of knowledge is literally at our fingertips. And as developers, we know that APIs are the engines that work behind the scenes to shuffle, send, and receive the data that these applications and services need. We consume and expose the APIs that billions of people use every day. And for more than a decade, the RESTful model of API development has been the industry standard. But hold on a second. If the way that we build applications continues to evolve, shouldn't the way that we build APIs evolve with it? That's where GraphQL comes in. GraphQL is a query language for APIs that gives your applications the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more. GraphQL started development all the way back in 2012 and was open sourced by Facebook in 2015. Facebook built GraphQL to handle the demands that came with their transition from HTML5 based mobile apps to native ones. They built GraphQL to give developers the power to quickly develop, deploy, and scale their APIs with ease. If you've used Facebook in the last few years, you've used GraphQL without even knowing it. However, before we dive in too deep, let's quickly go over what GraphQL is. As mentioned earlier, GraphQL is a query language for APIs. And what that means is that GraphQL is an application layer that serves as the middleman between your client and the server. Just as with REST, GraphQL takes queries from your client and returns a given response. However, unlike REST, GraphQL allows you to specify the exact resources that you want. We've only just skimmed the surface of what GraphQL has to offer. Before we go any further, let's go over what you need to know in order to be successful in this course. To follow along, you'll need a working knowledge of JavaScript as well as a familiarity with developing RESTful APIs. Knowledge of the Express framework is recommended, however, it's not required. GraphQL itself is language agnostic and it's been implemented in languages ranging all the way from C Sharp to Ruby. However, we'll be using JavaScript because of the community and the ecosystem that have formed around it. In this course, you'll learn GraphQL's fundamentals through the development and integration of the Hacker News API. If you aren't familiar with Hacker News, head over to the link in the sidebar and explore. The application that we'll be integrating our API into is a clone of the existing Hacker News app. As a quick aside, the application itself is built in React and Redux. However, you won't need to know either in order to be successful in this course. We'll write and execute our queries using plain JavaScript. And later on in the course, we'll cover a few of the frameworks that have risen up around GraphQL, like Relay and Apollo. In the next module, we'll go over a few of the core concepts that set GraphQL apart from REST, and then use what we learned to start building our API. So let's get started.